Hey everyone, I'm Corbin Fraser, and this week in the Cryptoverse, we've got Bitcoin brushing against those all-time highs. The case for BTC to $1 million. A million smackaroos! Central banks are buying Bitcoin, apparently. Talk of a Trump dump in the inside scoop of CBDCs, and of course, Big Brother. Plus, we're checking in on some OGs, Ethereum, Cardano, Chainlink, Tether, Coinbase, the whole gang. But first, uh, another massive announcement from Bitcoin.com, which is that we are now offering Bitcoin rewards currently at 30% APY. And the best part, it's fully self-custodial, meaning your rewards are automatically accessible to your wallet and under your control at all times. So there's no lockups, no penalties for early withdrawal, and no centralized exchange shenanigans like with most other Bitcoin rewards programs. So to get started earning Bitcoin, Download the Bitcoin.com wallet app, get your hands on our rewards token verse, which you can also earn for free in the app by completing simple actions like buying and trading Bitcoin and crypto, and then deposit that verse uh, into our Bitcoin rewards smart contract. So huge shout out to Threshold Network, which is making it all possible by seeding the rewards vault with TBTC, the most decentralized, permissionless, and secure way to bring Bitcoin to the Ethereum blockchain. All right, on to the news. So Bitcoin hit $73,600 per Bitcoin on Tuesday, setting records with $65 billion in 24-hour trading volume. So the key drivers here, big inflows from spot ETFs, election odds favoring Trump, and possible future Fed rate cuts that could further boost BTC, which we always like to see here. So as volatility rises, Bitcoin's future looks primed for action with traders holding strong positions for what is next. The Bitcoin ETF scored big on Monday with uh, just under half a billion dollars in uh, inflows, pushing the, the total assets under management past the 1 million BTC milestone. So the day's total ETF trading, it uh, hit $3 billion, making up just under 5% of Bitcoin's market cap. So meanwhile, the Ethereum ETF bleed continues with about a million dollars in outflows. Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, is back with another hot take on the Bitcoin markets. He's calling for Bitcoin to uh, have a big old blast off and is urging his followers to buy Bitcoin now while the price is right. His thesis remains that hard assets such as Bitcoin and silver, uh, they're all solid bets against the impending economic instability. He's predicting that, uh, you know, what he's calling the everything bubble, which is that everything is doomed to pop. Uh, but he's optimistic about capitalizing on the chaos predicting that Bitcoin could eventually soar to as high as $1 million by 2030. He encourages folks to stay informed and get ready for the opportunities ahead. However, eternal Bitcoin skeptic Peter Schiff is uh, once again sounding the alarm for Bitcoin investors, suggesting that they brace for a Trump dump. He points out that while Donald Trump's election odds are rising, Bitcoin uh, isn't following the trend like other Trump-related assets. So Schiff claims that all the speculators might have already bought in, and if Trump's assets take a hit, Bitcoin could drop too. Meanwhile, surprise, surprise, he's bullish on gold. Uh, he always is, predicting that it's set for a big bull market due to inflation and central bank policies. So also, Morgan Stanley is raising alarms about the uh, 2024 U.S. presidential election, predicting it could lead to major market volatility. Analysts point out that the uh, delays in counting ballots and mixed economic signals might stir up uncertainty. So they caution that tight races and uh, possible surprises could leave results hanging for days or even weeks, adding to this market turbulence. So their advice is that investors should stick to long-term strategies and not get rattled by the election drama. Personally, I'm expecting a lot of chaos and chop. Uh, it's going to be terrifying, but kind of exciting. Fun to watch. Very difficult to trade, so be careful. Uh, Matthew Ferranti, an economist from the Bitcoin Policy Institute, is arguing that Bitcoin, like gold, could be valuable as a reserve asset for central banks. So while only El Salvador officially holds Bitcoin, other nations might be exploring it quietly as a hedge against inflation, uh, as well as sanctions and global disruptions and all the other chaos of 2024. So uh, Bitcoin's limited supply, security, and resilience make it appealing, especially for countries facing geopolitical challenges. So in his paper, Ferranti said, quote, Bitcoin possesses distinct investment qualities that could support central banks in diversifying against a range of risks such as inflation, geopolitical tensions, capital control, sovereign debt, banking instability, and financial sanctions. If gold is accepted as a reserve asset, Bitcoin merits similar consideration. If you haven't already checked it out, 
go take a read of my latest op-ed. You can find it in the link in the description below. Meanwhile, according to a report from Juniper Research, central bank digital currencies are set to explode with 134 countries exploring the tech, many already in the advanced stages of development. So the report claims that we're finally on the cusp of this like CBDC era. Advocates highlight the uh, potential savings on cross-border payments, while critics argue CBDCs will accelerate the global financial panopticon, granting authorities even more powers of surveillance and control. Over to Russia, where the government just dropped a new crypto law that tightens control over digital assets. Signed by President Putin, the, uh, the law expands oversight of crypto mining and lets the government impose regional restrictions and monitor miners' transactions more closely. While individual miners can operate without registering, if they stay within certain electricity limits, businesses will need to register and follow all these new rules. Russia is also pushing for a state-backed digital currency, the digital ruble, to help navigate uh, sanctions and reduce dependency on the U.S. dollar. Over to Latin America, or LATAM, as we sometimes say, uh, where after the Bolivian central bank relaxed crypto rules, a private bank has rolled out custodial USDT services. So despite the bank charging $40 for international transfers on USDT rails, the service is nevertheless expected to gain traction among large businesses and institutions given the extremely limited availability of US dollars in Bolivia. So speaking of USDT, at the Plan B forum in Switzerland, Tether CEO Paolo Ardoino shared that the stablecoin giant holds over 82,000 BTC and 48 tons of gold, totaling around $9.5 billion in reserves. Uh, he clarified that this amount doesn't fully represent Tether's backing, uh, as they also have about $100 billion in U.S. treasuries. Tether recently made headlines amid reports of a U.S. government investigation, which Arduino uh, dismissed as old noise and criticized as wildly irresponsible. So switching gears and onto some innovation in the cryptoverse, Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, he's uh, revealed the Splurge, which is a roadmap aiming to upgrade Ethereum's EVM to a stable end game state. So this plan focuses on boosting user experience, improving transaction fees, and exploring advanced cryptography. So it's all about making Ethereum more secure and scalable, opening doors for new innovative applications. So I'm happy to see this. Vitalik talking his book, pumping ETH. Let's do it, man. Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson hinted at bringing a Nintendo emulator to Hydra, which is Cardano's Layer 2 solution. After successfully running Doom on Hydra, developers are eyeing classic Nintendo games next. Uh, meanwhile, Cardano teamed up with Bitcoin OS or BOS for increased cross-chain functionality, giving Cardano's DeFi sector access to Bitcoin's liquidity. So the mix of gaming and finance aims to broaden Cardano's ecosystem, showcasing Hydro's potential for more interactive blockchain applications and game buying, things like that. Another OG in the space, Chainlink just launched data streams on BNB Chain's Layer 2, boosting DeFi uh, with real-time high-frequency data. So this integration supports faster, more efficient apps on uh, BNB with transaction speeds hitting up to 10,000 transactions per second. It's a great news for developers and users alike. Be interesting to see that one unfold. As for our final story of the week, we have some exciting announcements from Tether and Coinbase. These OGs are pushing blockchain tech forward with new AI tools focused on privacy and autonomy. Tether's local AI development kit supports private peer-to-peer -peer AI apps that run across all types of devices from phones to high-end servers, keeping data secure on your device. Coinbase's based agent, meanwhile, enables quick setup of autonomous agents uh, that perform on-chain actions such as deploying NFTs or transferring assets, all without user input. So these tools hint at a future where AI operates seamlessly in decentralized networks, blending privacy with blockchain's autonomy and setting the stage for innovative, secure AI blockchain interactions. And that wraps it up for this week, guys. Uh, remember to keep your eyes sharp on the market, guard those assets, and stay one step ahead of the curve. Go follow Bitcoin.com news on Twitter, on YouTube, all the other stuff. Thanks for tuning in and catch you guys next time. Uh, we'll see you next week.